Hi, my name is Tony Wagner. I'm co-director of the Change Leadership Group at the Harvard Graduate School of Education. I've also done a great deal of consulting nationally and internationally for a number of organizations and foundations, including the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And I've spent a lot of time here in Iowa. And I want to talk to you as Iowa's leaders about the challenges that I see for education and Iowa in the 21st century. Iowa has long enjoyed a reputation as having an outstanding education system. But what was good enough for 25 years ago doesn't work in the new global knowledge economy. First and foremost, do you know you're only graduating eight out of 10 kids, according to the research that I've done? 20% of those kids a quarter of a century ago might have been able to drop out and get a decent job, but those days are over. More importantly, the question is, what percentage of your students are graduating college, career, and citizenship ready? And how do you know? They pass the test, the Iowa test of basic skills. Is that a good measure of career, college, and citizenship ready? It's not. That's the bad news. The Iowa test of basic skills tells us nothing about the competencies that students must master in order to get and keep a good job in the global knowledge economy and in order to be an active and informed citizen and a lifelong learner. We had a senior executive at Pella in a meeting just yesterday tell us kids come in applying for a job at Pella with a good GPA, a good grade point average, passed all your tests, guess what? They're not necessarily employable because they don't have the skills that Pella needs and that every company needs to thrive and to succeed in a highly competitive economy. Now, I describe what I call the seven survival skills in my book, The Global Achievement Gap. You may want to take a look at that. But let's just start with two, critical thinking. Every single senior executive whom I've interviewed or community leader says, we need all young people to be critical thinkers and problem solvers. Pellet folks said that. That's at the heart of their continuous improvement process. Now, how many students graduate knowing how to think critically? And how do we know? Iowa Test of Basic Skills doesn't tell us that. Communication skills, absolutely essential. It is the number one criticism of both employers and college teachers that students do not know how to think critically, as well as communicate effectively. A senior executive at Dell recently said to me, you know the reason why students can't communicate effectively? They don't know how to think. They don't know how to reason. They don't know how to analyze. So what's your uh, communication accountability in Iowa? Do you require students to have an extended writing sample? Of course, I'm asking a question to which I already know the answer. That wasn't funded in the most recent legislative effort. Every student needs to be able to communicate effectively. And I believe part of your responsibility is to create an accountability 2.0 system for higher standards of performance. So there are assessments out there. The Program for International Student Assessment, for example, a test used in 56 countries, challenges students to show what they know, to be able to apply what they've learned to new problems and new questions, to communicate effectively. How are we doing on internationally? Let me tell you. The science exam, 56 countries, students took it. We were 35th out of 56. Students in 56 countries took the math exam. We were 39th out of 56. They created a problem-solving test for all 15 year, years old students in the PISA recently. 29 countries took that. Where were we? 19th. We're not globally competitive. And for Iowa citizens to have a future, to have a robust and thriving economy, I believe you're going to have to hold your schools and districts to a much higher standard. You're going to have to look at the new accountability systems, the new forms of assessment that you can use that will let you know whether or not students are mastering the skills that matter most. Beyond that, I deeply believe you're going to have to fund R&D, research and development. You know, I ask superintendents, what's your R&D budget? And they laugh in my face, because they know there is no R&D. And without R&D, there's no innovation, and there's no real change, only incremental improvement. And small improvements are not going to get us where we need to go. What do I mean by R&D? Well, you know, Budget for Cisco, Microsoft, 15%, 20% R&D, Google's even more. We need to fund laboratory schools in all of our large districts or in consortia of small districts. Schools of choice where 
Parents, teachers, and students can work together to really determine how best to teach the 21st century skills and to motivate today's students. You know, this next generation, they're not the sit and get kids that many of us were. They can't be taught successfully the ways in which we were taught. Not only will they not master the skills, they're going to be bored. This is a generation that is constantly interacting on the internet. They're multitasking in a multimedia world everywhere except in schools. So it's first and foremost, all kids, new skills. How do we develop the accountability measures for that? And then secondly, how do we motivate the next generation to want to achieve excellence in the 21st century? And those are the parameters within which we need to create laboratory schools. That, in a sense, is the design specification, if you will, for schools that consciously, intentionally, and transparently work towards creating the new curricula, the new teaching methods that are absolutely essential if we're to succeed. Finally, I would like to suggest that you reconsider how you certify teachers and administrators. I deeply believe that just as students need digital portfolios that follow them through school, where they have to show what they know, where they have to demonstrate proficiency and mastery of critical thinking and communication skills, and publish work that they can show teachers in the community, just as students should be required to do that, I think teachers should be required to have a digital portfolio in order to be certified to teach in the state of Iowa. What do I want to see in that portfolio? I want to see extended samples, video samples of teachers teaching lessons. I want to see samples of their lesson plans. I want to see samples of student work that has been done. I want to see how they interact with students. I want to see students discussing the ways in which they were motivated in these classes, all in this digital portfolio that is then reviewed by peers. Now, lest you think that's a kind of utopian notion, essentially that is exactly the methodology used by the National Board for Professional Teaching Standards for voluntary certification of teachers. They're now applying the same procedures for certification of administrators. What would be an administrator's digital portfolio? Uh, their school improvement plan, their professional development plan, sample videotapes of faculty meetings or departmental meetings, interviews with teachers, uh, videotapes of the ways in which they're coaching their teachers to improve continuously. What we're talking about is a sense of transparency throughout the entire system as the foundation for a higher level of accountability. Accountability just can't be through compliance. You can't just make a lot of laws, new laws, and expect that people are magically going to change. The other kind of accountability that's needed, in addition to new and better legislation, is what I would call reciprocal and relational accountability, which only happens through transparency. When students know they have to produce real products for a real audience, they move up to that challenge. We see that. I've seen that in the best schools around this country. When teachers know their work is more transparent, more visible to their peers, when they're working in teams or when they're being videotaped, for example, they move up to that higher standard. Same with administrators. We have to understand that all educators must be a part of a team where they're holding themselves and one another accountable to these new higher standards. Now, these are ambitious efforts that I'm describing to you, but you have been leaders in education throughout the 20th century for this country. So I'm suggesting to you that if you want to continue to be national leaders as a state here in Iowa, these are some of the new challenges, these are some of the best practices, these are some of the redefinitions of excellence in education for the 21st century. So I thank you for your important work, I thank you for your commitment to Iowa, to Iowa students and educators, and at the same time, I leave you with a set of challenges and urge you to have a different set of conversations here in this state. Thank you.